Well, hello, friends, and welcome to the Serenity OS update for August 2020. Now, before we begin, let me tell you about sponsorship. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe someday make it possible for me to do this full time, then there are three donation options. I'm on GitHub sponsors and Patreon for those interested in making a recurring monthly donation. And I'm also on PayPal if you prefer making a one-time contribution. And as always, of course, a huge, gigantic thank you to everybody who's already been supporting me somehow. Um, the support for this project keeps growing and it's absolutely lovely. Uh, and it's just really, really cool. <laughs> so thank you everybody for, um, for helping me out on this strange journey. So uh, anyway, let's take a look at August. So we got a whole bunch of new things. Um, something that stands out right away, if I can get my mouse to work, is um, all of these new icons here in the system menu. So there was a huge icon overhaul by somebody who goes by thank you, very cool. So thank you, uh, thank you, very cool, very cool. And he um, also did a new calendar widget here. If you click on the um, time and date, then this thing pops up which I think is very, very lovely. And it's like a little mini calendar. And also you'll notice that the time and date is now actually uh, accurate. Previously it was not. So thank you, Nico, for fixing uh, the way we read the um, computer clock. And then I guess let's take a look at some new applications. So um, one new app we have this month is a 2048 game so the classic game um, which can be uh, very hard to put down if you start playing it I'm not gonna get too deep into it but uh, this was added by Ali uh, and then uh, Sergey did a sort of a visual overhaul to bring in the colors from the original game and stuff so thank you Ali and Sergey for, for adding this awesome game uh, I admit I've played quite a bit of it uh, anyway, and then um, there's also a new chess game uh, that was added by Peter, and it started as just a GUI for a chess game, but then he went and also started building a chess engine, which we can play against here, and um, it's actually it's a bit slow because we allow it to think for a while, and it's a little bit stupid, but uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, it's going to get better. And I'm not going to play a full game, but... Um, as you can see, he makes some interesting decisions, um, but uh, there are a couple of different um, piece sets here. So this is um, one that was made by Stellar7, and there was also one made by um, Tibor. And um, we're still we're still looking for for perfect pieces, obviously, but we'll see what we end up with. Um, but it's very fun that we can play chess against Serenity right now. So thank you very much, Peter, for starting on that. And oh, and there was actually something that happened because of chess is that we now have this um, resize that maintains the aspect ratio. So you can now define that like a window should be a certain aspect ratio. And then, yeah, when you resize it, it will maintain that ratio. <laughs> um, so that's really nice as well. And another application that's new is, oh, I don't know if it's actually in the menu yet. I might have to open it here, is a spreadsheet. So um, out of nowhere, Ali started building a spreadsheet. So we now have that. Uh, we can add some numbers together here. And of course, uh, let's put B1 and B2 together, form 579. and. And this thing here, this expression evaluator, it's JavaScript. So um, it's uh, it has all kinds of interesting JavaScript functions already. Uh, here you can see there's an average function. So the way you would call this is you would say like um, average of uh, b1 and uh, oh wait, I have to make a range. Uh, average of range b1 to b2 
and this is the average of these two cells. So, a very interesting project. Um, thank you to Ali for starting on this, and I love that this uh, documentation here is sort of generated from the source code, um, and it's using a uh, Markdown web view here, and actually this is the first client of the multi-process web view um, outside of the browser. So this, this um, web content here that we generate with the documentation, it actually runs in a separate process. We can see here, um, this is not, not the most important thing to sandbox in the world, but it's pretty cool that we sandbox it nonetheless. Um, so I, I'm a little bit excited about that. And um, the work on the spreadsheet has also driven a lot of work on the table view in the system. So we now have, uh, in addition to column headers, we now also have row headers, as you can see here. Um, and there is keyboard navigation of table cells. So, and you can like start typing here, however you like. Um, and we have these nice selections and stuff. So a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. And something I also like is the bottom side tab here. So if we add some more sheets, we can see them in action. Um, so I implemented these because I thought it would look nice and I think it turned out really nice. And then I also ended up using them in the um, system monitor. So if we look at spreadsheet here, we can see at the bottom we have some bottom side tabs. These guys used to be on top, but I felt like they look really good on the bottom. Anyway, <laughs> um, and I think this is a new tab here, also the processors tab. Well, I don't remember who added it, but um, thank you to the person who added it. Uh, it. I'm running in a single CPU mode right now, so you just see that one CPU. Um, and all of the features, <laughs> it's quite a long list. Anyway, um, then let's go and look at Tap Studio maybe. So we can open that up, open that up here. So um, also some new icons here in Hack Studio from, again, from Thank You Very Cool. And Hack Studio has had a bunch of work on the debugger this month. So let's see if we can run this program. Um, we'll set a breakpoint here at this printf statement and run in the debugger. So down here we have sort of the debugging uh, pane where we can do cool stuff like step in. So we can now actually step into the printf. And um, this puts us in the source code of the Serenity C library, which automatically opens when you try to step into a C library call. And then you can just step through printf like no big deal. And here you can also switch tabs and see the registers at the current execution state. And you can see they turn red when they change, so it's quite easy to follow along each step to see, see what's going on. And in addition to looking through the source code here, we can also switch to a disassembly view, although this isn't really fully fleshed out, um, but it's an interesting start. So um, thank you very much to Itamar, who worked a lot on the debugger, and to um, Luke, who did the register and disassembly stuff. Um, a lot of great stuff, guys, and really fun to see where we go with this debugger. Anyway, let's see what else we got. So there's been a bunch of work on the browser, of course. Um, one thing that's new this month is that I started implementing content editable. Um, I started implementing content editable which is the foundation of um, text editing in, in the browser, right? So this document here is editable. Uh, it's just for testing, but it's pretty cool. So this is gonna pave the way for um, very, very cool rich text editing capabilities in the system eventually. Um, and uh, there's a little, little detail here, I guess, that's also noticeable that you now get um, an iBeam cursor when um, when you're hovering text. So that was implemented by Andrea. So thank you, Andrea. And then there's been a lot of new elements added, a lot of DOM attributes and stuff. Um, the web API keeps growing and 
Uh, Luke did a lot of great work on that, so thank you, Luke. And on the JavaScript side of things, I think the main thing we've seen this month has been a lot of date and time uh, functionality being beefed up and improved. And it's been mainly Nico working on that, so thank you very much, Nico. Uh, I don't know what possessed you to spend so much time on time, but <laughs> the, the system is improving as a result, so that's awesome. Um, and let's see, let's bring up something else, maybe the help application. So in the help app, we now have a search. You can search through our documentation. Uh, if I want to search for get UID, then I can find all of the man pages that have get UID uh, in them. And for some reason, I can't actually open them. <laughs> Seems like we have a bug here. Um, that, that worked recently. Uh, I need to go and fix that. But that's, um, you can see that the full, search, full text search is at least um, filtering correctly, even though I'm not able to open the actual pages. Um, and what else do we have? Here is, oh, I don't know why they look like this. We got a little bit of bugs here and there. So there's a new shell uh, man page, which documents the shell command language that's kind of evolving right now. So Ali has been uh, writing this documentation and implementing a bunch of new control flow stuff in the shell. So now we have, in addition to for loops, we now also have if expressions. And um, there's been a bunch of interesting work on job control. So I can see here that apparently it thinks I have two helps. Um, and the, the output here is not entirely perfect, but but um, stopping and resuming jobs and stuff like that in the shell has been greatly improved this month, uh, thanks to work by Ali and by Ben. Uh, they both figured out a lot of deep things about um, Unix process groups and things like that. And uh, it's been really nice to see all of that coming together. And I did a bunch of work on the user space emulator also, <laughs> which is now able to run the shell since we're talking about the shell. So uh, here we can see that I was emulating the shell and using the shell to run ID and it didn't complain about any uh, memory leaks or anything. So good thing to know that the shell is not leaky. Uh, anyway, let's, let's switch to something else. So in the keyboard settings application, you'll notice this small difference here that the um, current key map, I'm using the English key map, it's actually selected when you start up the keyboard settings app. Uh, previously it, was, it would not select the current key map because we didn't store the current key map anywhere so we didn't know which one you were using. Um, but then this was fixed by Valtteri. Uh, so thank you Valtteri for, for seeing this through uh, all the way from the kernel to the GUI. And um, some other little things like that. Um, now we can have tooltips tips up here in the uh, applet area. This was not previously possible, uh, but Linus went and implemented the support for that. And then Nico um, took advantage of the support to add um, tooltips tips to the resource usage applets that I'm currently showing you. Uh, okay, <laughs> so I guess there's been a whole bunch of um, good polish stuff, not visually. Um, there's been a lot of polish around string handling in the C library from Ben and Sergey. And in the kernel, there's been a ton of interesting polish. Like uh, we now have strongly typed user space pointers, which I started working on last month. And then this month, uh, Brian has gone wild on the kernel and just propagated the pattern in so many places and it's really awesome because it's basically a, a C++ pointer type that uh, prevents you from confusing user space and kernel pointers. Um, and uh, it already caught uh, a bug or two, so that's nice. And we also have some other strong type tricks. Uh, we now have strong types for process IDs and thread IDs so that we don't mix those up which we were doing in some places. So that's also awesome. That was done by Ben. Um, and then 
Uh, also in the kernel, there's been a lot of fixes for race conditions and uh, some crashes and stuff. A lot of great fixes by Tom in the kernel, who also did um, anti-flickering fixes for the Windows server. And um, previously, if you would if you would do crazy stuff like bring all these animating things and put them like on top of each other and stuff, then it would you would get flickering. Um, and Tom went and tracked all of these things down one by one, uh, which took quite a long time, but he was able to figure it all out. And now we are flicker free, which is really awesome. So thank you, Tom, for, for going through all that trouble. Um, and another thing, oh, another thing which I love is that the kernel malloc heap is now expandable uh, as of just, uh, just, a, just a day ago. Uh, another great thing by Tom. So now when we run out of kernel memory, we don't panic. We just expand the kernel heap, uh, at least for a while, which is really nice because um, that's something that we've been hitting the ceiling on a couple of times, and it's really annoying when you run out of kmalloc memory. So that's been awesome. And then, uh, of course, special mention, since he spent so much time on it uh, for some reason this month, uh, Nico got really interested in um, optimizing the performance of disassembling bin ID. So this is now very fast. <laughs> it used to be very slow. Um, I think it took multiple seconds. Now it finishes in something like half a second. Uh, yeah, so that's that's really cool. There, there were all kinds of reasons why, why that was slow um, in the kernel and the memory allocator and, and stuff. And... Uh, he systematically went through all of the things and made it really fast. So thank you, Nico, for obsessing about that and giving us all great performance improvements. Um, and I guess that's that's really all of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, one thing that hasn't been about programming has been that we started doing some static analysis stuff. So uh, Brian has started uh, running Coverity scans on the project and a bunch of bugs have been surfaced as a result and that's been really cool. So looking forward to seeing more of that. Uh, thank you, Brian, for, for starting the Coverity stuff. Um, but that's that's basically everything I had. <laughs> so uh, it's been it's been a great month. It's been um, there's been a lot of cool stuff from from people other than myself. It's been really great to see, and it really feels like everybody's been um, busy working on stuff that they find really fun and interesting, and I just love to see that. So uh, thank you, everybody, for having fun. Um, I guess that's it. So <laughs> thank you for stopping by and checking out the progress. And um, as always, you can find us in the Serenity OS IRC channel on Freenode if you want to chat. Um, otherwise, I guess I'll see you next time.